height are equal to each other, the thetas of same height are, are equal to each other. We're kind of trying to make some generalizations so we can see the general behavior of projectile motion. Number three, the other generalization we made is that the higher the height, the less the angle is. And the less the height, the greater the angle, right? So theta of, uh, theta is uh, less as h increases. And then what's the theta at the top? Zero, exactly. How about another generalization? I know you, you can come up with one. One is pretty easy to come up with one other generalization. The time to go up is the equal to the time to go down. And therefore, the total time is equal to twice the time to reach its highest height. Right? T up equals T down. T total equals 2T up. So that means the time to go up to the, its highest height is equal to the, the, the time to come down to the same height. Now, I'm not talking about the time to go down further. That doesn't apply anymore, OK? And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, that, uh, oh, another thing you could say is the range. This is known as the range from where you shoot it to where it lands at the same height. That's known as the range. The range is equal to twice the distance that it was when it was at its highest height, right? So the range is equal to twice the, the distance that it was when it was at its top. Twice the x distance that it was when it was at its top, at its top point. Okay. Now, there is another angle, and people usually get this confused with the theta. There's another angle, and we can call that one alpha. That angle is the angle that the object is making from where you shot it. Right? We can call that alpha, let's say. Do you think alpha and theta are at all connected? Alpha is the angle that the particle makes or the object makes with, from where the point of uh, where you shot it from. Is alpha and theta connected? The answer starts with N. Capital N. No. Okay, I mean they're connected very indirectly. In that, uh, the, the, you know, the general equations of projectile motion allows you to find one of them when you know the other one. But it's a very loose connection. In other words, if I were to tell you this is thirty degrees, there's no easy way to say, okay, this is thirty, or this is twice thirty, or this is half of thirty. There's no easy connection. There's no obvious connection. So they're kind of in the almost not connected, you know. Now, how would we get alpha? If I wanted to uh, get alpha, what would I do? I would take the y distance that the object has gone, right? And I would divide it by the x distance that it has gone, and then tan inverse of that, right? OK, so let's now write down all of the equations of projectile motion that we can come up with. So in the x direction, Uh, Vx is equal to V initial x, which is equal to V initial cos theta. 
that's the x component of the velocity. And then we have x final is equal to x initial plus vxt. That's the only equations in the x direction. The x component is always equal to whatever its initial component was. And then the distance final minus the distance initial is equal to the velocity times time. There's no acceleration in the x direction. In the y direction, you have vy is equal to v initial y, which equals v initial sine of theta. Okay. dy is equal to v initial y, which equals v initial sine of theta. And then the other equations of projectile motion are the same as the free fall, right? Remember the, this equation? V final was equal to V initial minus 9.8 T, or in the British system, it will be V initial minus 32 T. That's the same equation as the first equation of free fall. However, we have to change this by putting a subscript Y because the equation only applies to the y component of the velocity, not the x component. What this is saying is that the final y component of the velocity is equal to the initial y component minus 9.8 t. So it's only the y component of the velocity that is changing. The x component is always staying the same. It's never changing, you see? And then the second equation is y final equals y initial plus v initial t minus 4.9 t squared. Again, you put the y component here. And in the British system, it will be and then in the next equation, it's v final y squared equals v initial y squared minus 19.6 y final minus y initial, which equals v initial y squared minus 64 times y final minus y initial. And the last equation is the, the equation y final equals y initial plus v initial y plus v final y divided by 2 times t. Remember, that's the equation that is missing the a. It missed the acceleration, so we don't need to put 32 there, or 9.8. It's, it's missing it. But wherever here there is an acceleration, we put negative 9.8. So these are the same four equations of, of free fall. So we use the same techniques of solving these problems. Depending on the problem, you've got to decide which one is the quickest way to solve it, which one is the more efficient way to solve it. You know. <clears throat> so having given these then, Now, let's add a few more equations. If I want to know the theta at any point, if I want to know the angle of the, the, the direction that the object is going, if I want to know theta, what would I do? I would take the tangent inverse of the y uh, component of the velocity divided by the x component of the velocity, right? So that's the general equation, v final y over vx. Now, vx is never changing. So that one always stays the same. But v final y, in order to get that, you've got to use this equation. All right? So depending on what is the final y of the, the final y component of the velocity, you divide it by the x component that gives you the theta. If the theta comes out negative, what does that mean? In other words, if the v final y was negative, then the theta is going to come out negative. If theta comes out negative, it means the object is already going down. The particle is going down. If the theta is positive, then it's going up. 